In the last video, we defined parametric equations to have a third variable. We call this third variable a parameter. It was usually given as either t or theta, such that we had x is a function of t or theta and y is a function of t or theta. In this video, we're going to look at sketching parametric curves. Sometimes we can take the parametric curve and convert it to Cartesian form and have a straightforward sketch. So an example might be x is equal to cos theta and y is equal to sine theta. We saw in the last video using a trig identity that we could say now sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Therefore, x squared plus y squared would be equal to 1. We've eliminated the parameter and got a Cartesian equation right here. We know this to be the unit circle or a circle center 0, 0, radius 1. So we can see from here that we wouldn't need to go ahead and plot a table of values. Sometimes it is more convenient to simply plot values of theta and t and find the corresponding x and y coordinates. That's what we're going to do in this video and just work through a couple of basic examples. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start off now with x is equal to 2 cos theta and y is equal to 4 sine theta. We're going to take theta from 0 to 2 pi. So what we'll have then is theta, we will have now x, and we will have y. So let's start now and we will do 0, we will do pi by 2, we will do pi, we will do 3 pi by 2, and we will have 2 pi. In between, if we're not getting an idea of a shape, we could always do pi by 4. We could do 3 pi by 4. We could do 5 pi by 4. And we could do 7 pi by 4. So sometimes when you're sketching these, the shape will become very apparent very quickly. OK, now, again, if you're unsure about this, what you can do is just draw the sine and cosine curves between 0 and 2 pi. So if we now sketch these here, then this may aid now our values. You can, of course, plug these into a calculator. So if we look now at sine theta, sine theta will do something like so. So we'll come up now, we'll have this point 0, 0. We'll have this point now, which will be pi by 2, comma 1. We'll have now pi, comma 0. We'll have 3 pi by 2, comma minus 1. We'll have 2 pi, 0. If we take the cosine curve, we come down, round, and back up, like so. So here we've got to now 0, 1. We've got pi by 2, comma 0. We've got to now the point just here, which is going to be pi, comma, minus 1. 3 pi by 2, comma 0. And then 2 pi, comma 1. So this now is y is equal to sine theta. And now y is equal to cos theta. So let's go ahead and sub these values in. So what I'm going to have then is the first one. I've got 0. So the cosine of 0 is 1. So 2 lots of 1 is going to be 2. If I take now sine of 0, we can see sine of 0 is going to be 0. So all I'm doing is plugging these values in. If I take pi by 2, what we're going to have then is 2 lots of cosine of pi by 2. Cosine of pi by 2 is going to be 0. So we'll have now 0. And then the sine of pi by 2 is going to give me 1. So this is going to give me 4. If we now consider pi, cosine of pi is going to be minus 1. So this is going to give me now minus 2. The sine now of pi is going to be 0. So we're going to have 0. If we take 3 pi by 2, we can see now that the cosine of 3 pi by 2 is going to be 0. And we can say now that sine of 3 pi by 2 is minus 1, so this is going to be minus 4. We're back round now, so we've created or we've gone one full loop or one uh, full period now of 2 pi radians. So when I sub this in right here, we're going to get 2 and we're going to get 0. So if I go ahead and look at these points right now, we can plot these. So x is 2, y is 0, that's going to be just here. Then we've got now x is going to be 0, y is going to be 4, which is just here. We've got now pi, so we've got now minus 2, which is going to be just here. So minus 2, 0 is just here. Then we've got 0, minus 4, which is going to be just here. 
Now, by the looks of it, we're going to have an ellipse. We could, of course, plot the points in between. So if I consider the points in between, if we take now pi by 4, the cosine of pi by 4 is going to be 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. So if I've got two lots of that, that's going to be root 2. If I consider now the sine of pi by 4, the sine of pi by 4 is root 2 over 2. So this is going to be 2 root 2. Now root 2 is about 1.4. So this is going to be now on the x coordinate, we're going to have about, now let's grab this up, about 1.4 and about 2.8. So 1.4 and 2.8 is going to be just here. If we go round, if we look now at 3 pi by 4, the cosine of 3 pi by 4 is minus root 2 over 2. So what we're going to get now is the following. We're going to get minus root 2 just here. Let's change that over. We'll put that in black. So this is going to be now minus root 2. The sine of 3 pi by 4 is going to give me root 2 over 2. So this is going to be 2 root 2. So we're going to have this point just here. And as we go round, let's just plot that roughly. As we go round, we will see by symmetry, the others are going to be just here. We're going to have now our minus root 2, minus 2 root 2, which will be give or take about here. And then the other one will be here, which is going to be now the root 2. And then we're going to have the minus 2 root 2. So if we go ahead and we could fill this out and you could, of course, put decimal values. Essentially, though, what we're going to have here now is this curve and this is going to be an ellipse. So what we've got then is the following. We're going to come around here and it will do something like this. Now, I looked at values starting at zero for t. When we do these curves, we show the direction that we've gone in. So if I just do that, this now is where we started. So I started where t, uh, so theta was equal to zero. So when theta is equal to zero, what we did is come up this way. So we could say if we wanted, we could say that theta was equal to zero. We come round and up to the top here, and we can say that theta here was equal to pi by two. We would come round, down, and so this is where theta would be equal now to pi. We would come round to the bottom down here, through the points, and we'd have now this ellipse, which looks like an egg. So we'll come round and we'll come round to here, like so. So what we've got then is theta would be equal to 3 pi by 2, and this would come round, something like this. And you could just put the arrows on to show the direction in which we've drawn this out. OK, so let's see if we could have converted this to Cartesian form. So if I look now, I could write that x over 2 was equal to cos theta y over 4 is equal to sine theta and what we're going to have then if we square these we can use the identity cos squared theta which should have to say plus sine squared theta is equal to 1 therefore from this we could say now x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1 and that is the equation of an ellipse and that will cut now the x-axis at the point 2, 0 and minus 2, 0 and the y-axis at the point 0, 4 and 0, minus 4. So there we go. That now is drawing a parametric equation given now x is 2 cos theta and y is 4 sine theta and I've taken values of theta from 0 to 2 pi. OK, let's draw another one. Um, let's go for this one. x is t squared minus 2 and now y is 1 third t cubed. So the first option now is to think, well, could I convert this now to Cartesian form? So let's just have a look at this now. So what we've got then is x, and let's write it here, x is equal to t squared minus 2, and y is equal to 1 third t cubed. Now, I could write this now that um, x, so x plus 2 is equal to t squared. So from this, I could say now that x plus 2 to the 1 half power, and we get a plus or minus on that, to the 1 half power is equal to t. So what we could do from here, we could say that y is equal to 1 third 
t cubed. So it's going to be one third for quantity x plus 2 to the power of 3 over 2. Now if we look at that, that's not really helping us massively. We could go ahead and try and square both sides. We could try and rearrange this. But from the face of it, that's not um, something that we could instantly recognize now as a curve, given the, the knowledge that we have. So if we multiply both sides by 3, I suppose we could then go ahead and square it. So I could say that 9 y squared was equal to x plus 2 cubed, which I could have done from the outset. That's another form. That doesn't look blind in the obvious of what it's going to be. So all we're going to do is go ahead and plot this. So what we'll do, we'll take uh, values of t, and we'll take t from negative to positive 3. So we'll have t, we'll have x, and we'll have y. So let's do minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. So let's go ahead, let's sub in now uh, x. Now for x when t is equal to minus 3, well that's going to give me 9 minus 2 which is going to be 7. If I sub in now for 2, the minus 2, that's going to give me now 4 minus 2 which is going to give me 2. If I sub this in it will be now minus 1. If I sub this 0 in it will be minus 2. If I sub in now uh, the 1 we're going to get minus 1 and you can see this is going to be symmetric. So if we now put that one in, that's going to be now on here. We're going to have at this point uh, 4 minus 2, which is going to give me 2. And then we're going to have the 7. OK, if we now sub in the value of y right here, if I cube this, that's minus 27. So this will be minus 9. If I now cube minus 2, that's going to give me minus 8 over 3, which is not a fantastically nice number to deal with. Um, that will give me minus 1 over 3. This is going to give me 0. This is going to give me, now if I consider that's positive 1 over 3, positive 8 over 3, and then positive 9. So we can see now roughly the shape. So before it wasn't quite clear, but as we can see now, this should come out to be quite nice. So let's now start with t is equal to minus 3. x is going to be now 7, and y is going to be minus 9. So let's have a look at that. x is 7, which is just here, and y is going to be minus 9. So that looks to be that point just there. So we can say now at this point, t is equal to minus 3. OK, let's look at now when t is equal to minus 2. We're going to have 2 minus 8 thirds. So we're going to have 2, and then we're going to have now minus 8 thirds, which is just less than 3. And that's going to be give or take about there. So if we had now, for example, on here, minus 9 thirds, that's minus 3. So we're going to end up with this. Uh, then when now, and we'll put that on, that that is where t is equal to minus 2. So we're going to have t is equal to minus 2. And then on the next one, we've got now t is minus 1, and x is minus 1, and then y is going to be minus 1 third. So minus 1 minus 1 third is going to be around here, give or take. So what we've got here is t is equal to minus 1, so let's put minus 1 on, and it will do something like so. Then if we come up to t is equal to naught, we've got minus 2 naught, so this point right here. And we'll see that this is symmetric from here, so t is equal to 0, and then the next one we've got here, we can see it's minus 1, 1 third, which is going to be just here. Then the next one we're going to get is going to be symmetric, so it's going to be the 2, and then we're going to get positive 8 thirds, which is going to be just here. And then we're going to get the other one now, which is going to be 7, and then we're going to have positive 9. So that's going to be just here. So if we put these t values on, t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, and then now t is going to be equal to 3. Let's put that there. So what we can see when we sketch this out, it's going to look something give or take like so. So we're going to come up here and then round. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will have, let's now just sketch this up. It's going to look, let's have a think now. We're going to come up and it's going to come round and like so. So we will open up and it will look something like give or take like so. I appreciate I've not quite gone through that point there. And we can do, let's go through there and something like this. So whilst this isn't brilliant, and whilst I've missed a couple of the points, hopefully now you can get some appreciation. Let's put these points on here. 
So what we can do now is put the arrows on that we've now drawn this out like so. So we've come up, we've come now, and we've shown that these are now increasing values of t. So we started now with t is minus 3 and come up, and we'll have something that looks like this. So we'll have this V-like shape. So we've got this point right here, which is negative 2, comma 0, and it will sweep up in this way. Now, of course, we could get some more information from this. If I consider now this point right here of intersection, if I wanted to find where it cuts the y-axis, we would simply now set x is equal to 0. So we could get a value of t at that point right there. So if we consider now, let's have a look at those. Uh, so on this one now, when it cuts the y-axis, we can say x is equal to 0. So 0 is equal now to t squared minus 2. So we can see from this that t would be equal to plus or minus now root 2. I could go ahead and sub that in here to find the value of y. And all we do is do that. So we could see that this point right here, this one here, is going to be now one third of root 2 cubed. And then this one would be minus one third of root 2 cubed. So there we go, that's now sketching a parametric equation. And often you don't see these uh, directional arrows put on, but I think it's nice to show the way in which we've drawn this out. The same with the values of t. I've included them, but you won't always see them. So that's the rough shape from there, and it will be symmetric about the x-axis. So we've looked at drawing two basic curves uh, when they're defined parametrically. Now, some of these parametric equations look awesome. What I've got here on the next couple of pages is uh, some examples. Now, this one right here, this is x is equal to 1.5 cos t minus cos kt, and y is equal to 1.5 sin t minus sin kt. If you want these, the guy or the lady who's done them, they're just here. I've not done these. Check out this site here, um, and you'll see them. So what they've done, they've taken k to be 1, which gives us a circle, then now k to be equal to 2, and we've got this cardioid. And now, as k increases up to 20, we end up with these awesome patterns just here. So k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 20, and you can see that these give really quite nice patterns. Um, if we have a look at another one, uh, this one, x is equal to 1.5 cos t minus cos 3t, y is equal to 1.5 t minus kt, where k is 1 to 20. So k is 1 here, 2 and 3, and so on and so forth. And then you can see you end up with some really crazy stuff. So there we go, some parametric curves, and we've sketched them from a table. So as stated, often it's as easy to convert to Cartesian form and draw it directly. If not, we can plot given values. Clearly, again, the more values we have, the more accurate. I've done this one by symmetry. I also converted it to Cartesian form, if you spot that.